We're looking at those upside plays in the middle rounds of our draft. We're trying to get the most bang for our buck at wide receiver, running back, even at tight end. We're looking at those rookie wide receivers. We're looking at those backup running backs. We're looking at those players that could turn over and become a league-winning asset. And that could be week one, week five, week ten. We don't know what's going to happen, but we're looking at the pure potential of that player. The player that we're looking at right now is Ladd McConkey of the Chargers, a rookie wide receiver with a lot of upside, has a lot of nuance when it comes to route running, has the speed and everything else. We're going to deep dive him right now, but before we do, you need to click that subscribe button right now. We're doing deep dives on these players every day even in season the waiver wire players will cover the waiver wire and then we'll do deep dives on a lot of the players on the waiver wire when things change for a player they get a new situation new team whatever deep dive on that player when a trade happens a guy gets cut a guy gets benched deep dive on the next man up it will be right here and we're going to help you set your lineups we're going to help you with the waiver wire all that stuff too click that button right now stop missing out because you're going to win your leagues over here. Right now, Ladd McConkey. Well, not 100% right now. This is a depth chart from the Chargers that was on Twitter. It's a little dated. We'll get a more official depth chart going forward. But we got some competition on the offense here with Quentin Johnson, Joshua Palmer, and DJ Chark here. And we got Ladd McConkey waiting in the wings. And there's a lot to look at when it comes to the Chargers in this offense because we got a new coaching staff. Things are looking different. We lost the starting wide receivers. They are gone. They're not here anymore. So we got some targets opening up. There's a lot of upside that could swing both ways for Ladd McConkey, but he was not a heavily recruited wide receiver coming out of high school. But he turned that around at Georgia in a big way. He defied all the odds, and he might do that at the NFL. But we were a slow starter, you could say that. His final year there at Georgia, he was dealing with some injuries that slowed him down a good bit, but averaged 3.26 yards per route ran with a good average depth of target of 12.2. So he was also getting the deep balls. He was also pegged as a slot receiver that can also get it deep downfield. So that adds some versatility to the offense. But looking at his numbers from a market share perspective, and I got almost all the rookie wide receivers down here. I got more, but that's what I can screenshot right now. When you're looking at the market share perspective here by age, you're looking at the ownership of the passing offense. How many yards percentage-wise do you own of your team's passing production and the earlier you do it the better and we're looking at 20 percent or better so he never really broke out he would have broke out this year because he was dealing with an injury and that slowed him down and still owned over 17 percent but it just never happened that is a red flag when you look at him metrically but when you watch him on tape you see the nuance you see the speed you see the draft capital you got some other metrics there that's also hitting his way but he never broke out in breakout age. When you're breaking out age 18, 19, it's usually a prerequisite for heavy hitters at the wide receiver position, long-term in fantasy football, those breakout players that just hit early in their career. But it doesn't mean they will. And there's a lot of players that hit during those ages that don't hit. But I say prerequisite because usually the guys that do hit, they do break out early in their collegiate career. Usually age 20 or earlier is what you want to look at. 21, 22 is kind of a red flag because you're kind of an older prospect beating up on younger players. But on the flip side, you will catch players breaking out age 21, age 22, and will break out at the NFL level, but you will see far more busts as well from those age ranges. But Ladd McConkey, 439, 40-yard dash, we got the draft capital here, damn near first round prospect. He was making waves at the Senior Bowl. His route running is on point. He's one of the most nuanced players in the 2024 NFL draft class. He looks like he's NFL ready. He's a hard worker. He's got a lot of grit. He is a hardball guy. He is a hardball type wide receiver. And the way he breaks off routes and creates separation that could earn him targets if he's on the field running routes where you got the speed to get behind the defense you can put him on the slot you can put him outside you can move him everywhere and you can stretch him as well but you look at the wide receivers here and you're like man that's very ambiguous you don't have any jamar chases here really clogging up the depth chart you do not have him anybody of consequence 
clogging up the depth chart and might take a ramp up period for him to start seeing considerable snaps and targets but the upside's also immense because everything's very ambiguous on this depth chart quentin johnson we saw what he did last year there's some highlights from training camp this year but those highlights were out last year as well dj chart can stretch the field he's a veteran he's been a journeyman as of late and josh palmer has been the steady eddie of this team has been the reliable wide receiver but lad mcconkey high draft capital good route running good speed could assert himself as one of the main target hogs in this offense going forward and it might be this year it might be middle of the season might be in the back half of the season but you got to pay attention to him but one thing you do got to pay attention to to caution this tale is the hardball offense and things change with personnel but really we just talked about an ambiguous wide receiver depth chart and the most glowing thing on that depth chart is a rookie wide receiver we're looking at a coach that runs heavy, that slows things down. We do not pass it a lot. 24 attempts per game back at Michigan. We won like that. They won like that. But still, something to keep in mind. They also brought in two running backs, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, which is something they needed to do. They got running backs on the cheap that are very dependable. But Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are gone. That opens up a lot of targets. Mike Williams was out a lot last year. Keenan Allen was out some last year, 152 targets zapped, almost like 180 targets gone from this offense. Austin Eckler's gone as well. Targets got to spread around in this offense, but we also might see this offense run at a slower pace, but someone's got to take over. Is it going to be Josh Palmer? Is it going to be Quentin Johnston? Is it going to be another wide receiver? It's open for Ladd McConkey to just step up and take over, and that could be week one. That could be October. That could be around Halloween. That could be right around Thanksgiving. It's open for Ladd McConkey to take over. And drafters realize this. And his situation is very ambiguous because of the change in coaching staff due to what they have on the roster and that he could really step up and take over. But he's also a rookie and he could ramp up. But we're going in the range, like I always talk about, where you're taking your rookie lottery tickets or your young wide receivers at a lottery ticket to see what happens. And that's what I'm going to value him as. And really, when you look at the wide receivers in this range, Jamison Williams, Ladd McConkey, Keon Coleman, Jack Smith Najigba, Romo Dunze. You look at these wide receivers, even down a ways, and you see lottery tickets. You can't say for certain any of these guys are going to 100% break out. Probably one or two of them will. Probably one or two of them will. Which one will it be? All of them have good things in their profiles going into this season. Some things got to break their way. Some things have to happen. So when I look at these wide receivers at this range, it's really what lottery ticket I want to roll with versus the RB2, the running back in this range that I may want to roster. If I'm feeling icky at running back, I'm probably going to pull up on one of these lottery ticket wide receivers. I'm not just talking Ladd McConkey. I'm talking overall strategy. Pick your lottery ticket that you want. If you're in one league, draft the way you want. If you want that running back, get that running back. If you want that lottery ticket wide receiver, get that lottery ticket wide receiver. But what we're looking at here, overall baseline macroeconomics, is that this is the lottery ticket range of the draft. And the market's been holding steady all summer long with Ladd McConkey. In your home leagues, he's going to fall back a little bit. He's going to be a little cheaper. I would say around 8, 9, 10 range. That's a little bit more palatable. If I feel icky at running back, I'm okay with it because wide receiver at that point is also going to be a little icky. But I like Romo Dunes. I like Xavier Worthy, who's jumped up around. I like JSN. I like Keon Coleman as a lottery ticket, but I don't feel 100% safe with him. I love Brian Thomas Jr. Jameson Williams has a lot of upside here. Ladd McConkey, though, is a lottery ticket. He's a lottery ticket. And these lottery tickets, you got to diamond fist them. And there's going to be a part of the season where some of these lottery tickets, the running backs and the wide receivers, you're wondering when it's going to happen. People said that to me about Devin Achen last year. They're wondering when they could drop him. 
They were asking about that, and I would say, hey, you got a diamond fish. You got to hold as long as possible. You got to do what's right with your roster. You got to read the poker table in your league. You got to see what's going on. There's more than just tit for tat. It's not in the phone booth, but you also got to hold as long as possible. Hold that line with some of these rookies, some of these young guys. And next thing you know, the next week, the week after, he broke out. He broke out and went off. And that's what we're talking about with these lottery ticket wide receivers and running backs because they got a lot of upside. They can help you out a lot. They can win your league for you too if they hit and they're cheap assets. But you do not need him because he's too expensive for a lottery ticket. He's too low in the depth chart for you. You're going to start off too slow for you. You don't want a slow starting wide receiver. You want something now. You want one of the running backs. But you need him because you want the rookie lottery ticket. You want that lottery ticket right now. You want to see what's going to happen with him. You think he's going to hit early. You think he's going to jump the depth chart. You think he's going to be the guy. You want to rock Lad McConkey. I understand. I got a lot of Lad McConkey in Dynasty. I got some shares of him. I have drafted him before in a lot of leagues here. Lad McConkey's got some juice to his game. Very nuanced, smart player. I like him as a player. Let's see what happens. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on the next video.